at this. You don't hit your head on that. Doesn't end well for you. Hi, welcome to Beer with MZ Burning Glass. Today I'm drinking Kyla Hard Kombucha out of Hood River, Oregon. And I am drinking Cascade Fog Hazy IPA from No Lie Brewery. Look at that, perfect. Pretty good. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. I'm Brie House. And I'm Ben Bradley. Let's talk about last week's jobs report. Do you like scary movies? Ah! <laughs> Did you ever have friends tell you that a movie's really scary, give it a big build up, and then you finally watch it and it's not that scary at all? Well, that's what happened with the latest jobs report. Okay, let's start with the spooky music. Huge spooky music. Yeah. As you know, the Bureau of Labor Statistics puts out a jobs report every month. Well, their December report was pretty lackluster. Omicron was surging and lots of economists were worried about the toll on the economy. Then, last Wednesday, the private payroll company, ADP, shocked everyone by announcing its own survey of employers, which found that private sector jobs actually declined by 300,000 in January. That raised the tension among economists as they awaited the BLS release of their January jobs report. What would the numbers show? How bad would it be? <laughs> Well, last Friday's government jobs report found that non-farm payrolls actually grew by 476,000 in January. See, that wasn't scary at all. The BLS also revised upwards the lackluster numbers from December and November, more than doubling each month's estimated jobs numbers. Omicron did have an impact, and the share of employees who telework because of illness jumped by 15% in January. And six million people said that they had been unable to work because their employer closed or lost business because of the pandemic. That's double the number from December. Oh, you wanna cheers? Yeah, why not? We never did that. We did. Then. We did? Mm. We cheers? Mm -hmm. Even so, there was strong job growth in several industries. Accommodation and food service saw the most gains, with 131,000 new jobs. In retail trade, added 61,000. Other big winners were professional and business services, with 86,000 new jobs, and transportation and warehousing with 54,000 new jobs. That's good news for the supply chain. Wages also continued climbing upwards in January, yet another indication of the wage pressures because of the tight labor market. And that's one of the big takeaways from these reports. The job market is still tight, and it's likely to stay that way. Moving on up. I'm sure you want to do that without me singing, but. <laughs> no, I think we want the singing. We want the singing. The government's monthly job openings and labor turnover survey also came out last week. And that report showed that job openings remained at near record highs of 10.9 million in December. There are now only 58 unemployed people for every 100 job openings. That's tough math if you're an employer looking for new talent. One thing is clear, employers remain in a constant dogfight for talent and the churn in the job market continues. I am like thoroughly impressed by your ability to like not screw up the words. Cause I, every single time they have to be like, Bree. I'm an actor. <laughs> I'm an actor. <laughs> Here at MZ Burning Glass, our detailed labor data and expert analysts help thousands of businesses, colleges, and governments analyze the shifting talent market and develop strategies that guide them for success. Our clients range from small mom and pop operations to some of the biggest Fortune 500 companies. If you're struggling to figure out this labor market, let us know how we can help because creating a people plan shouldn't be all that scary either. For more information and analysis, read our blog here. Thank you for joining us for a beer with MZ Burning Glass. Cheers. Oh, thanks. Wait, oh, now we eat. Yeah. Dance off. Dance off. Nope. Just keep right here. Keep right here. Have you thought about doing robot hands with